Welcome to my channel. If you've been watching my videos, you know it's been a long, hard road to get to the point where I am today with the land. In just over a year, I've fenced my land with barbed wire, installed a gravel road leading to my land, added a storage container, parked my RV, installed a 500-gallon propane tank with a generator, purchased an ATV, and I have finally completed the excavation of my pond. A lot has happened in just over a year, and I'm so happy where I am right now. If you own land, you probably know that there's always something you can do to improve it, and my next project is installing a wooden pier at the pond for fishing and docking a Little John boat. All part of my master plan for my 24 acres of paradise. So here's the beginning of the pond, right here. So I, I'm gonna start here, go out. It's gonna be a fairly narrow walkway. I'm thinking three feet is probably wide enough and then make it bigger at the end because this isn't a big pond and I don't really wanna take up too much real estate with regard to the walkway out to the pond. Okay, so I need to move it, I think, just slightly so that it's a little more straight. That's the great thing about string. It kind of gives you a better visual perception of what you're doing. All right, so I got three feet across on center. And so that's 24 feet long, three feet wide. So the first thing I do is drill some holes for the walk out here and uh, put in some posts. So here for the holes, I'm using an 8-inch auger drill bit to create the hole. And I'm using a 6-inch by 8-foot treated post for the support. It's really nice to have that extra space in the hole to allow for minor adjustments to the position of the poles. I got, for the walkway along here, I have six more posts that I need to do. 
once the six posts are done, then we'll uh, move on to the next stage. Hopefully all this will happen without rain since we're like getting these rain forecasts every week. But uh, it's hard to tell how much is going to come down and whether it's even going to hit or not. All right, I got four posts in. I'm gonna tamp down this one, then I can start installing the framework for the initial four posts. And then I'll drill in a couple more holes up there. I'm gonna have to saw off the top, probably this one too here, saw off the top of the uh, posts to make them level. Uh, so anyway, but I don't have to do that right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the framework now. All right, so I got my half inch uh, lag bolt here and uh, it's five inches long. And so I'm gonna drive these into the posts to secure everything down. Now I have a half inch socket, which I'm uh, putting on an adapter. That way I'm not having to manually tighten everything. Yeah. in right these two pieces of wood yeah pretty much i mean i need to tighten them but right. they're pretty much drilled in that's going to go underneath there So I want you to just hold it, hold this. You got to drill uh... Sometimes it falls off really soon. Huh? That was good. Good. 
Yeah, buddy. They can just tighten those a little bit. Well, we're going to work on this one first. All right. All right, try winching. Find one. The other one. Stop. Stop. Little boy. All right, stop. Stop. Can you tamp it down or put a rock yeah. or something inside of it so it'll keep it? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. We got these two posts leveled out uh, and uh, Christian's taking the ATV back to the container or riding it around or something. Anyway, yeah, these two posts were a little off, so we had to use the winch and uh, I need to take some measurements, make sure that everything looks good there. Uh, I'm gonna put on some more of the braces there and then we'll do some more work. Look. All right, good. So now we can, uh, on that one, we'll just tighten it with a wrench. So this is looking pretty good. We have six posts in. We got the braces right there. We need to get some more of the eight foot braces. And then we'll have one more set of posts right here. And then it's just a matter of putting up the planks and we should be good to go. So this is pressure treated wood here. And so is the posts. be able to cast out into the water here when it fills up. That looks good in the RV. You can actually see the pier from here, from the RV. All right, another day, another dollar that I'm spending. 
Anyway, I got some more lag bolts to finish this off here. You can see I just have one more set of posts that I need to put in, and then we will have the framework set up. And hopefully before it rains, it's supposed to rain tonight, so we're gonna see if I can get all this done. At least get the framing up, and if I have that up, then I'll be able to get um, the planks on with no problem, even if there's water in here. I mean, I doubt that this is gonna fill up completely. Uh, with this next rain that's coming. Uh, I don't even know how much rain's going to be, but uh, it's supposed to be short-lived, so I uh, might get a little more rain in the pond, or water in the pond. Uh, but I think it's going to take several rains, good rainfalls to fill this up. Okay, so the last thing to do is to uh, put on the planks. So that'll be the final thing to do. Got all the framework set up and that's awesome because it possibly might rain quite a bit tonight. And uh, if this pond does flood for whatever reason, I'll be able to get up on top of there and put on the planks with no problem. I got the posts in the ground, which was really the biggest thing. And then the brackets, the framework was next. So now it's gonna be fairly much a breeze to put on the planks uh, without having to worry about the water coming up. This was, uh, I think, uh, four, four days, or I would say probably I spent about 16 hours so far on the uh, project here.
probably another four or five hours to put the planks on. Since there's a good chance it's gonna rain tonight, I'm gonna to put down some grass seed on this area here where I was had the excavator and the wheel loader. And, uh, you know, I kind of leveled it out a lot, um, but, you know, it's all dirt, clay, and it's subject to erosion because of that. And so I'd like to uh, put down some grass seed, and hopefully the rain tonight will uh, help kind of get it started. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. The uh, seed I'm using is uh, Groundwork Rapid Grow Sun to Shade grass seed mixture and so that's what I'm going to be putting down it's uh getting into fall right now so I'm hoping that some of this is going to work for fall like maybe some winter rye whatever it's supposed to grow pretty quick so maybe I'll get something before it really gets cold here's what it looks like That's it. I'm gonna see how this looks in maybe a month or so. If we get some rain, maybe we'll get some sproutings and uh, get a little bit of green in here. All right, so my plan is I need to level off the uh, post there right there so that the planks are going to sit flush. Um, so I'm going to do the chainsaw deal. Otherwise, that's pretty much what it's going to look like when it's done.
All right, so there is the pier. And uh, I'm going to put in a couple more posts right here at the front so that I could have a step, just one step up onto the pier. And uh, then I'll go ahead and uh, coat this with a sealant. Uh, I have a walnut, walnut color sealant that I'm going to put on top. Yeah. It's all solid now. And right out here will be the pond once it's full. And it'll look really good. And I'm planning to put right down here a, uh, I'm gonna hook up a solar light. And that'll be awesome. You shine it in the water and be fishing out here with catfish and bass. All right, we got the pier done. Looks really good. Let the, uh, I'm going to let the deck seal dry and then it will be usable. Still got that water down there. We didn't really get much rain this last time around. San Antonio got a lot of rain, about four inches or so, but maybe a quarter of an inch down here. That's the deck. You know, put a solar light right at the end there to shine in the water. And this is a deep pond. That is awesome. It's going to be really deep. And right over here on the other side of this pier, we're going to put a little fish shelter for mainly the smaller fish to hide from the predators. And so we're going to use cinder blocks to do that. So Christian started loading up cinder blocks down here. We're gonna have maybe about 20 cinder blocks in this area right here. And you can see they're ideal for a fish shelter because they have the holes in the cinder block for them to hide out in. You get a bunch of those together. That becomes a really nice area for safety for these little fish. So anyway, All right, Christian, help me uh, get these other ones. All right, so here's the pier again. I think I'm gonna trim up this side over here, the grass. Although I don't wanna get any of that in the pond because I hear that you don't really want grass in the pond. It promotes algae and other stuff. That is it there. So we got the pier and we got the fish shelter down here. So that should serve well for bait fish perch or brim whatever you want to call them down here sunfish <clears throat> we'll have catfish and bass in here you can see that there's been a little bit of evaporation of the water you can see the kind of the damp area on the edge there and uh, still pretty hot for a late October day it's pretty cool this morning, about 50 degrees this morning, but it's right now about 90, 90 plus degrees. So, man, look at all those frogs. They're just all over the place. There's one right here. See him? He's just hanging there. There he goes. He's not very scared. I guess he doesn't think I'm going to get him. He's all over the place. That's great food for uh, the other animals. I don't know if raccoons eat them, but that would be a nice, healthy meal. Here's a look at the pier from the back end. So, 
It's about four feet deep at the end here, if it were to fill up completely. And for me, it's five feet to the uh, decking. So it's about one foot off of the high point of the water. And so that, uh, that should work. Definitely want it higher than lower. Don't want it sitting in the water. That's a good looking pier now. Yeah, just hanging out. That is really deep from this side. Here I'm using a tape measure to measure the depth of the pond. And I'd say there's probably an additional two to four feet of water uh, from the surface to the bottom. Mm. All right, so that is to there. To there is 13 feet. But uh, it's 15 feet of the deepest. And then it's pretty deep all up in this water area here. And then it starts going up fairly quickly to from 15 to about 10. Uh, and then 8. And it's a little shallower on the uh, farther end. So it's probably about what well, the, the base of the the base of the pier um, to where the water level would be is four feet. So that gives an idea of where that is. But it's good to know that the deepest part is 15 feet deep, and that's a lot of water. It'd be a great environment for fish. I do need, when I get an aerator, it's gonna be a solar aerator, and uh, I'm not gonna be able to put it at 15 feet, unfortunately. I think they have like a 10 foot or 11 foot limit uh, because of the pressure, the water pressure. I don't have any electricity out here, so I have to use solar. So I'm probably going to have to put the aerator somewhere over here where it starts loping up and hope that it doesn't uh, have an issue with uh, the deeper water there. I've heard some really good reviews on uh, using aerators that clear up the water, or at least they keep it from getting algae, and uh, it's just a healthy environment for the fish. And um, also thinking of using the dye, the water dye, but try to keep it a, a more of a natural color, uh, nothing crazy. And uh, just that way it kind of darkens it a little bit and prevents the algae from uh, taking hold in the pond. Well, that's the end of this video. Be sure to stay tuned for future videos. I'm gonna be finishing the root cellar pretty soon, so be on the lookout for that. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.